Hello, my name is Piotr Hofer, and I am here to tell you a few things about our approach to creating reliable embedded products effectively. Uh, I am from AntMicro, and Micro is a software-driven company, and we are strong proponents of everything open source. Uh, we are members of the Risk V International from its very beginning, uh, and we strive to help our customers introduce new open source based uh, methodologies, methodologies and workflows in their development. Uh, so here's a somewhat simplified uh, depiction of a typical design cycle of an embedded product. Uh, first, you start by gathering requirements. Uh, this is the more difficult, the more innovative your product is about to be. And then you find or usually create your own custom hardware that will meet these requirements. And when the hardware is ready, you start with the software development and sooner or later uh, you realize that the decisions you made uh, at the very, very beginning were not always uh, optimal. Uh, so you update the hardware and you update the software and you repeat the process until the product is ready to be shipped. And this is, of course, expensive, time consuming and annoyingly sequential. Uh, we would like to seek an alternative to that. Uh, and look for better solutions for typical problems. First, uh, instead of creating the hardware description up front, uh, we feel the more natural approach is to work incrementally, uh, following the ideas that rise when your product is evolving during the development stage. Uh, instead of waiting for the hardware, we believe the software development should start early, uh, evaluating the hardware decisions uh, you made as soon as possible. Uh, of course, when you create the software, after some time you hit the wall of the hardware constraints. Uh, we think it should be the need of your product that drives the development of both hardware and software and not artificial limitations that you uh, came up with at the very, very early stage of the uh, design cycle. Uh, and lastly, of course, the sooner you start testing the whole setup that is hardware and software together, the better for the final product. And this presentation is about building blocks. Uh, so we understand these blocks in two ways. Uh, first, by using open source solutions, uh, we avoid creating things from scratch. Uh, and I will focus on such open source projects that are mo modular by design, uh, helping us develop uh, embedded systems the way we want to develop them. Uh, the first project I want to mention is Renode. Uh, Renode is our own open source uh, hardware simulation framework. Uh, that can be used uh, in different ways in, in different stages of your uh, product development. So it can be used for interactive development of software. Uh, it can be used uh, for pre-silicon prototyping, for hardware software co-development, uh, or even earlier for design space exploration when you look for the right way to, to solve uh, the problem that you're about to solve. Uh, Renode supports a, a wide var a variety of uh, uh, platforms and architectures, uh, RISC-V being the uh, very prominent uh, one in the recent developments. Uh, we have the latest addition of the Icicle kit with Polarfire SOC uh, by Microchip. Uh, so here I have a long list of uh, supported platforms, and that is probably not uh, even complete. Um, but the idea here is to understand that Renode supports not only CPUs or even whole SOCs, but it can support complex systems, boards uh, with uh, sensors and whatnot, uh, or even wired or wireless networks uh, of such systems. And while Renode can be used effectively for interactive development, we encourage our users to use it in a continuous integration context as well, uh, testing uh, each and every commit of their software they uh, they create and uh, push on their servers, uh, improving the software reliability by uh, giving the programmers feedback as soon as any problems arise. Uh, you can go to testing Renote.io uh, to see some example workflows uh, that we test internally in Renote just to get a glimpse of what's possible in uh, to, to be done with Renote. Uh, as I said, Renote is based on building blocks. Uh, all platforms available in Renote are based on text files uh, describing their components and connections between them. Uh, so changing a platform, for example, changing the size of memory or moving peripherals around or uh, 
changing uh, interrupts uh, is as easy as editing this file. Another project that we are uh, heavily involved with uh, is Litex SOC Generator. Uh, SOC Generator means that we are obviously talking about systems targeting FPGA platforms. Uh, the nice thing about Litex uh, is that along the SOC design, it uh, produces a basic BSP uh, that you can base your software upon. Um, so uh, Litex is also very, very modular and it allows you to select uh, from a, a wide range of uh, IP cores uh, uh, to be included in your uh, final design, uh, starting from the simple ones like UART, I2C, etc., uh, to more advanced like uh, PCI Express and Gigabit Ethernet, uh, SATA, SDIO, etc. Uh, and uh, with these uh, components, you can uh, embed a CPU. Uh, Risk Five is also obviously uh, very uh, friendly to the FPGA ecosystem, uh, so there are uh, many uh, Risk Five cores to, uh, that you can select. Uh, but there are also other arch architectures supported as well. Uh, obviously, everything is open source, available or on GitHub, uh, and uh, uh, moreover, uh, Litex has nice software support. There is a Zephyr port, there is a Linux port, and the community is uh, very active and it's uh, quite easy to, to start developing in Litex. Uh, so we have the SOC, uh, we have development tools, uh, and we also have the software support. Uh, Zephyr Artos is uh, also very modular and flexible, uh, especially as it relies on uh, device trees to describe the uh, platform that you're running. Uh, so now we have three modular projects, Zephyr lying on the device tree, uh, Litex uh, allowing you to uh, select uh, components for the final SOC, and Treenote relying on the platform description files uh, that describe the, uh, the system in the emulation. So if you have so many blocks, uh, there is a big chance they will fall apart. Uh, so that's why we support the Litex ecosystem. Uh, with tools that allow you to auto-generate Renode scripts and Zephyr device trees uh, from Litex platform description. Uh, so when you uh, uh, create a, a Litex-based uh, system, you get a file that can be further on used to generate all the other files that are required for the components I mentioned. Uh, so with this automatic approach, uh, you are easily able to verify how will changes to the hardware affect your software uh, in a single CI environment uh, very easily. For example, you change the amount of memory uh, or add new peripherals or remove some of them. Uh, you regenerate uh, Litex description, uh, then you regenerate uh, Zephyr, you generate new uh, Renode platform description, and you run everything in a CI environment, uh, verifying it all works fine. Uh, so Renote modularity gives you more than uh, just that. Uh, there are many features that uh, will help you improve the development process or even the product design. Uh, and I will mention just a few of them. Uh, so depending on the CPU you work with or the size of the FPGA, uh, or even the physical connectors on your board, uh, you might or might not be able to properly debug your software, for example, with GDB. Uh, in Renote, you don't have to care about physical limitations, obviously. A debug unit that is similar for all supported platforms uh, is always ready for you to connect GDB uh, and to, to debug your software in single core or multi core uh, scenarios. Um, Suppose you want to enhance your product with a custom accelerator, for example, for machine learning application. RISC-V with its extendable instruction set is very, very open to that idea. Uh, and Renote allows you to easily add your own custom CSR registers uh, or even instructions with just a few lines of code. But the fun part is that you don't even have to modify uh, Renote sources. Uh, you can just use scripting capabilities uh, for that, Renote scripting capabilities. Uh, so here is uh, an example on how to add custom instructions to a RISC-V core uh, in runtime in Renode. Uh, 
uh, using Python to describe logic of such an instruction. I don't have time to describe each and every Renode feature today, but I welcome you to visit uh, docsrenode.io uh, where we have uh, many nice tutorials and examples on how you can use Renode to improve your own development. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.